immediately stop listening to this podcast and take action by joining us at the Inner Circle Live event, January 6th through the 8th. But Russ, what if I don't know where to even start? Hey, no worries, Joey. We're going to be covering the passport, which will help you understand what you want to be, do, and have. All right, but what if I don't have infinite banking set up yet? No worries, man. We got all our coaches are going to be there. You can ask them questions, but also we're going to take you through the passive income operating system that we have used personally in order to build our passive income and take active income and turn it in to passive income, utilizing the infinite banking concept. But I don't even know which passive income path is right for me. Man, you got all these questions, Stallion. I've got answers for you, bro. Here's the key. We've got six different presenters coming in and going to share six different strategies of ways you can build income in 2023. But I don't even have the money personally to build this passive income. What if I told you we have Travis Smith with Travis coming? His tool allows you to build a tribe so you can invest with family and friends. Okay, okay. Then the only thing I don't know is where do I sign up? Gotcha. Go to wealthwildwallstreet.com forward slash live and put in the discount code podcast because you are listening to this podcast. You are our tribe. We love you so much. Next thing we're going to do is do chicken suits for commercials. Join us January 6th through the 8th. See you there. Russ, Why we're talking about cash flow today, the ways in which you can increase your cash flow. And I think the bottom line about this for me is it sounds good. Cash flow sounds good. We spend cash flow. But the bigger thing to me is this feeling of not getting anywhere, right? Without cash flow coming in and increasing. I mean, think about today. The, the, the things, the threats that are causing your cash flow to get squeezed, gas prices, inflation on food. I mean, I look back over a year and our, our food costs are easily 30, 40% higher than they were a year ago. We, we had a, we, we had a census person show up at our house yesterday, Joey. And the lady asked my wife, um, I need you to answer a couple of questions. My wife was like, beat it. And she's like, just a couple. <laughs> and so the lady was like, okay. And Meg was like, whatever. All right. What? And she's like, how much do you spend? How much did you spend on groceries last week? And I was like, I don't know, 500, I think about fell over. <laughs> She's like $500. Yeah. But I mean, reality is when you go and you, you're, you're buying, you know, like real vegetables, real meat, it, you're going to see that bill really high. And especially today, I mean, the prices are probably one and a half to two times higher than they were a year ago. Exactly. But the, the, the bigger thing about this topic is the, the feeling that, I'm on a hamster wheel that I can't get ahead. Like I, I'm doing all that I feel like I can do at my job. It, I'm capped there. I have a salary. My, my, I've talked to my boss about increasing it, whatever it may be. My wife is, is working. My husband is working, whoever your spouse is. And we're, we feel like we're just giving all that we have and it's still not enough. I mean, what, what would you say? You've heard these conversations as well. I mean, why, are, why is this so important? Well, it's so important because if you don't solve it, then you're going to stay stuck where you are, right? I mean, I think the most frustrating part to me is that we now have figured it out. We've seen it. And if we had to do it over again, we could. It would be no issue, right? You've seen these TV shows where they drop a millionaire or a billionaire off and they reinvent exactly what they did because they figured it out. What's frustrating for me is all the people who hadn't figured it out, who don't know how to increase the top line revenue, who don't know which expenses to cut. So they cut the wrong ones and they end up being in the same position, but they want out, but they don't know what to do. And I think the beauty is, is that this podcast, this specific episode and all the podcasts that we do are designed to create ideas. If you want it, if your why is greater than your why not, there is a way out. There's a path to financial freedom, passive income greater than monthly expenses. But sometimes you have to, as we talk about in this podcast, Joey, is you have to increase active income. You have to go create a side hustle. There goes to the, the point. You, your why is going to have to be greater than your why not. I'll tell a story in this podcast of how somebody spent an extra four hours a day building out a business, but after two years gave them back 
all of the hours that they were working in the other job too. And when you get to see and hear that, it makes it all worthwhile. So Joey, yeah. let's don't continue to steal from this podcast. We're going to talk about how to increase active income, but also passive income. And we're going to give you a couple of ideas on how to reduce overhead. Let's jump in right now. Pull up our chairs and belly up. Yeah. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome to the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy. Most because lack of follow to guy just didn't sound so cool. But enough about me for a moment. Let me introduce you to my co-host, my partner. He's the Italian stallion. He's got a license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joe Murray, stallion. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Glad to be here, Russ. What we'll be talking about today? Three ways to increase your cash flow, man. You got you got at least one way for me today. Oh, I got so many ways. This is so. But let me just tell you the reason that we need to be covering this right now. Uh, just the other day, um, one of friend, one of my friends from church, we were just talking, and he he just started making the mention that it seems like it's impossible to get ahead. And the reason that he did that is he's just like, I just don't know what to do with money other than what, like the generic things people have always said to do with it. And so I pay off debt. It, it comes back. I have to get new debt. I feel like I'm just on this. Uh, what did he say? It was like a hamster wheel. And I was like, man, the key is cash flow, right? We got to give people exposure to ways in which they can be more in control instead of them being a victim of what they have right now in terms of a salary or otherwise, there's got to be something. Else. So today's podcast is all about exposure and uh, man, yeah, I'm all about this. Yeah, I love it. All right, well, let's get around because you and I are not the only one here, man. Let's let somebody else in the, in the room. Let me get to my left. I got... Mr. Incredible, his superpower is speed to financial freedom. The real beauty is that speed is contagious. My man, J.D. Hill, say hello to your fans, J.D. Hey, Jamie. Hey, fans. Uh, glad to glad to be here. Uh, excited for Christmas, as you can tell from the undecorated Christmas tree behind me. Uh, <laughs> my, my wife set that up, um, and I was left to decorate. Clearly, it's not a priority right now. What is a priority, though, is cash flow. That is a priority for me right now. Well, I was wondering if if your way to cash flow was by not direct or not spending money on decorations for that Christmas tree. I'm I'm trimming the fat this year. You know what I mean? <laughs> I am trimming the fat, and so the eight ornaments that that tree can hold, they had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get around to the retiree of the group, Mister Catch Me If You Can. He's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna. He's right here dropping gold nuggets. The one and only Mark Caraguchi. Welcome, Mark. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, this is a fun one. I, I I really like this idea. You know, three ways to increase your cash flow. I'm I'm really kind of disappointed that you know, it sounds like the Grinch is in the room because why only three? I mean, there there's there's just so many. It it, it almost feels like we're withholding a few. All huh. right. Well, I mean, hey, look, it, it, we can give more than three. How, how about if we just break it out into three topics, but we give many ideas underneath those three topics? Well, that sounds fair. Okay. Perfect. We're completely redoing the whole podcast stallion. Be ready for it. All right. Oh, ready. Let's get around. We got the piano man in town. We're all in the mood for passive income. And you got to see in the light, Mr. Matthew Hammond. Welcome back, Matthew. Uh, thank you, Russ. It's good to be back on this uh, beautiful afternoon. Listen, man, I just like Mark said, I'm excited about this topic here. Uh, I, I, I dare say anybody listening to this podcast, their number one goal or it should be their number one goal is financial freedom. And, you know, you, it's hard to have financial freedom without cash. And it's hard to have cash without cash flow. So 
uh, as far as as far as that's concerned, uh, this this should be this should be on the top of everybody's priority list. Listening to these uh, ideas, oh, so good. All right, let's get around. Last but not least, the king of Beham, Mister Real Estate himself. He's agnostic to his type as long as it produces cash flow. The multi talented Jamie O'Brien. Good to see you, Jamie. Real, it's good to be here, man. Celebrating another damn paradise. Dude, and rocking the Braves hat today, like completely moved up the list of my favorite on this podcast. <laughs> pulling it out, you know, the the O'Brien Holmes hats were getting stale. So, you know, I had to switch it up today. All right. Tell me why today's topic is so important. Uh, Russ, they say cash is king. But to Matthew's point, it requires extra cash flow to build cash. That's why it's so important. It is. And I think for those who don't really understand cash flow a lot, right? One of the things we say is that income minus expenses is going to equal your cash flow. And that's where we're focusing. Most of our brain is on what the net is at the end. But I, to your point, Mark, I don't want to just limit anything. I don't, definitely don't want to be the Grinch here. I want to open up the opportunity. I don't want to our brains being two times too small. I want to, to grow. <laughs> so let's think about what if we can not only grow our top line revenue, right? And that top line revenue could be increased in multiple ways. It could be increased by our active employment. It also could be increased by our passive income. But then also we can impact the bottom line by reducing overhead. So if we're going to break down these three topics, let's Let's start out with the active side. Let's talk about reducing overhead in the middle, and then let's get into maybe helping create some mailbox money in the end. Sound good, Stallion? I'm all in. Let's go. All right. I, I'm going to start. When you talk about like top line, active income, I heard this one time, and I, I love it, the saying that you need to create a five to nine that takes place after your nine to five, right? We all have built to some level, a nine to five in our life. But when we're trying to increase active income, we're trying to increase bottom line cash flow. One of the ways that we can do it is by taking on a strategy that we hear on this podcast. It could be short term rentals, like when we had Clint Lovett on the podcast. It could be uh, land flipping, like when we've had Mark Podolsky or Tate Litchfield on the podcast. It could be the Burr method when we in, uh, invited Anidi and Pollock and they were teaching us how to build a rental property. But all of those things require effort, at least initially. And I remember um, not too long ago, I was having a conversation with a guy that's in our community, is in our inner circle, and he was telling me about how he worked for two years in this side hustle in his five to nine, building a business, a stream of income that took place after he went to work. He said, sometimes it was even before I went to work. He said, I'd go in early and I would work an hour and a half before I started driving the truck. So he was he actually drove a, a beer truck. We've had him on the podcast before, Adam Agla. And it took him about two, two and a half years of doing that five to nine to where he was able to replace his nine to five income. And as soon as he got to that point, he was able to leave the job and be able to really just focus in now on that five to nine, which was able to work within ever, whatever time frame he wanted. And he, he messaged me the other day and said, man, I not only is this working so well for me, but I'm also going on my ninth family vacation of the year. And he's like, there's no way I could have done that if I've been tied to a cubicle. And that's what I love is sometimes we think about the active income part and we're like, man, I, I'm already working too hard. But what if you put a little more effort in? Would you be willing to give up a couple of years in order to gain back all of those other hours every single day for the rest of your life? Jamie, you got a thought on this increasing kind of your active income. Give me give me feedback. Yeah, you know, my my story started not so dissimilar dissimilarly to that. That was a hard one to get out. Um, you remember those old double mint gum commercials, double double your pleasure, double your fun? Yes. Well, what worked out for me, it ended up being double your pleasure, single your income. And what I mean by that is <laughs> I found out we were having twins and we were gonna have to keep my wife at home because we we don't have any family close. And I realized that uh even though I was making decent income at my W two, it it wasn't enough to get 
myself and my family where I wanted from a legacy standpoint and, and from a wealth generation standpoint. So I dug deep into learning about real estate, um, learning how to burr, learning how to flip houses, learning how to analyze deals. And it took me, you know, six to nine months before I ever bought my first rental property and started flipping houses. But I took every free second I had. Um, luckily, I was in a job where I had a ton of windshield time and listened to, to any audio book or podcast I could get my hands on. Um, and then I started buying houses. Yeah, you know, I took that information. Information. I took the cash flow and the cash we had been able to save up, and, and I started down my investment journey. Um, and six years later, we're still chasing it. Well, and the, the beauty of that, too, is that you start creating more income there, which does create more cash flow at the bottom, which allows you to recycle that money and do it again, right? 100%. 100%. Turn and burn. Mark, what's your thoughts on this? You can work harder, but there's only 24 hours in a day. And you still need to sleep, you still need to eat, you still need to do all those those normal things in a regular day. So my thought of trying to increase your hourly wage is, why not leverage someone else's time so that you can do something else? Maybe you can hire a lawn maintenance person, uh, a cleaning crew. I've, I've got a, a group of ladies that comes in and cleans my house. It's amazing. Like my, my hourly rate during that time is phenomenal because they roll in, I close the door to my office, an hour and a half later, it's like magic. My house is, is, is done. It's clean. So not only was I able to do work, but I also was able to clean the house. And so my hourly wage is actually so much better because if, if you stop and you think about this, you can use that time that you're paying someone else to do something for you. You can leverage that opportunity to go learn something. You can get yourself educated so that you can then go generate even more income. And maybe now you've got even more than you had before. And so now you can hire someone else to do something else. Like I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I see how awesome people's exterior home lighting is during Christmas. And I am not getting up on a ladder. I'm done. Trust so me. now I'm looking into hiring someone to come and uh, put the lights on for me. I, I got a great referral. He, you know, he's in Alabama, but, um, you know, he, he may he may be able to make the trek out to Washington. Uh, the thing I love about what you and Jamie both have said here is it's a proactive approach, right? It's it's investing in yourself in both of those cases, because when you put yourself in a position of like in your case, Jamie, you had to do it right. You were in a position. Something's got to happen. And you had to invest in yourself, educate yourself and then take action. And then in Mark, your case is, man, I'm investing in myself because I know that my hourly rate can only increase if I'm able to, if if I put the pressure on myself, I've hired somebody to do something at $15 an hour or whatever the case may be. I have to be earning more than that. And that means I have to level up, right? I have to be around the right people, the right educational um, you know, components and things that will get me to that next level. So Enjoy. anyways, I love that. Joey, take that a step further. What's your hourly rate when you're doing that task? Zero. Yeah. I make nothing if I mow my yard. But if I can pay someone, if, if I can understand, if I can leverage your time, I, I need to give you some treasure for that. But now I can go and be so much more productive because I can go do something else. And actually my yard's still going to be mowed. So if you're doing the task, your, your, your hourly wage is zero. But if you can go do something else, now your hourly wage can be whatever it is you can do. Yeah, First it's of all, all, you you've never seen my yard, okay? Uh, <laughs> and my yard is pristine, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Nobody can cut my yard better than I cut my yard. Just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> if you've listened to our show for any length of time, you've heard us talk about infinite banking and how we were able to use that concept to create over fifty thousand dollars a month in passive income. It's just not that easy to figure out how does this all connect into my own personal system. Stallion, that's why we created the Passive Income Operating System, bro. It shows you how to turn active income into passive income. It makes all the steps come together. If you would like to get access to it as a podcast listener, we've never given this away in public before. Go to whatswhatwallstreet.com forward slash P-I-O-S. There was nothing worse than walking into class when you're in school and the teacher's saying, pop quiz day. Why? Because you were unprepared. Are you unprepared, though, for financial freedom? 
Don't be. Find out how close you are by taking our 30 second quiz at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash quiz. What you're saying, Mark, is if you're, I mean, it, it, it's the same exact concept, just using a different uh, viewpoint. Like whenever people ask us, hey, um, I, I saw you were responding, Mark, to someone in the community and they were asking, hey, should I use my, should, should I use my infinite banking system to pay for my primary me- residence, right? And you said, well, if I use, for instance, 500,000 of cash that's inside of my cash value, and instead of only putting 100,000 down and using the other 400,000 for an investment, I've now given up the difference between what the investment could have done and what the cost of the capital was, right? Borrowing the money from the bank. Well, that's the same concept. If there was leverage, if there was an, an actual benefit to investing and creating cash flow that exceeded what you paid on the mortgage, then it makes sense to do it. It's the same thing what you said. If I if I have the a job or an ability to create an income that exceeds in that hourly time that somebody's cleaning my house or cutting my grass or putting Christmas lights on the house, whatever the thing is, and I could be doing that and making more money, now I'm just leveraging their time and I'm earning the difference between what I'm paying them and what I'm getting. And I think that that's where people, and we're, and we're going to get here in a second, we're going to talk about re- reducing overhead. And I think sometimes people say, okay, I'm going to reduce my overhead by doing everything myself, right? That's one of the ways I'm going to do it. I'm going to get rid of the long guy. I'm going to get rid of um, the housekeeper, right? The nanny, all these things. I'm going to start doing it myself. Well, that is a benefit if you're paying them more than what you could produce on your own. And what I would say is maybe you need to be thinking of other ways that you can learn activities that can outproduce their hourly wage. All right, Jamie and JD, I, I don't want to steal something from you. I'm coming to you, JD, first. So finally, thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, no, that's good. I think, um, you know, this one for me is something I've talked about often on the podcast. I'm a big fan of, of partnership. Like I, I love partnership and I think, um, finding great partners to help you is often underutilized in business in general. Obviously you and Joey have, have found a way to, to, to make it work. Um, but I think, I think, and here's what I mean by that is that if you have more time than money, you then can be learning a new skill to recruit the funding, right? Or on the other side is say you have more money than time then you can find or recruit the time by finding a person who has the time, right? But either way, both ways can increase your output. And I think in a lot of ways, we oftentimes think like everything has to fall on my shoulders. I got to listen to the podcast, right? I got to go do the learning. I got to use my capital. I got to go do all these things in addition to take care of my family and go to work. And like, I think sometimes that can feel like it's really overwhelming when the reality is, is that there are other people that want to do that journey just like you do. And it's just a matter of how do you leverage your skills with someone else who has a different skill set that wants to go down that same journey you want to go down. That's a great okay. point. All right. So we, we've, I think we've tackled this first one, which is creating more income at the top, right? Let, let's talk a little bit to those who like to try to reduce the bottom line, who, who are trying to find ways to minimize expenses, reducing overhead. Stallion, throw your two yeah. cents in there. All right. So tons of different hacks and strategies and things like that. Um, but one of them that kind of uh, was apparent to me was when I left Wells Fargo um, back in 2014, I was trying to solve for health insurance. And you you guys have heard us talk about this on the podcast before, but I was faced with this. Um, when you go self-employed, it's like, wait a minute what are my options? And I started comparing them. I could either continue Cobra and it was super expensive, right? For my, my existing coverage I had at Wells Fargo. I could go get a new plan at Blue Cross Blue Shield as whoever I was, I was shopping with, so to speak. And very expensive. It was like $2,500 a month. And then the alternative was uh, Russ had introduced me to this idea of Samaritan Ministries. And we've had um, one of the the high executives at Samaritan Ministries on our show recently. And it it ended up being about $500 a month for my family of seven to be able to take advantage of that. And 
to me, it was just a no brainer from the function and the utility of what health insurance is supposed to be, right? Having a, um, a faith-based group of people who I could share expenses with and their lifestyles matched up with mine and so on and so forth. Like those things are very, very important to me. But when you couple that with the fact that I was able to save $2,000 a month in my health insurance column and be able to just fund my system that much more heavily, it was a no brainer. And man, I look back at that now and I think, how big of an impact has that made on my passive income streams? Because I was able to save $24,000 a year. Where did that go? It's now found its way into our land flipping business. It's now found its way into our short-term rental business. Like when you reduce your overhead like this and you find hacks and ways to, um, you know, create more cash flow, it has to go somewhere. And if you can capture it into your own system, now you're, you're catapulting yourself to financial freedom because you got that much more cash flow coming in. So that's uh that's my hack for you today. I love that. Hey Matthew, did you do you happen to catch who he said introduced him to that idea? I I couldn't I, I was distracted. Uh I I believe his name starts with an R if I'm not mistaken. Come on. You're um, getting closer. You're getting warmer. <laughs> Ramsey? What? <laughs> it rhymes with bus or cuss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew, let's talk a little bit about uh, reducing overhead, cutting expenses. What's your take on it? So when I'm looking at my overhead, uh, one thing I'm looking at is debt. And one thing that I'm prioritizing is I'm going to cancel out my bad debt. Now you may ask, well, Matthew, isn't all debt bad? Well, there's a lot of opinions that float around out there on that subject, but I personally subscribe to the teachings of Mr. Robert Kiyosaki. And simply put, he says, bad debt takes money out of your pocket. Good debt puts money in your pocket. And so I use that, I use that to determine what, what of my debt is bad. And then I take it one step further. Now that I've determined what my bad debt is, then I analyze it and determine, well, of that debt, what is the most inefficient debt? So what debt is actually taking the most money out of my pocket on a monthly basis? And then of course, the next question is, well, how do you analyze that? That seems like a very complicated way to analyze. Well, you know what? Russ and Joey and the team created a perfect little calculator that you can use called the priority payoff guide. And it is available in the Pathfinder course in our community. And what it does is it actually prioritizes your debt based on the inefficiency of that debt. And so if you have a car or a truck that's a you know a $40,000 vehicle and it's taking $800 out of your pocket every month, month after month, well, you know what? That's probably an inefficient debt, assuming you don't have it on Turo or something. But if it's taking money out of your pocket every month, well, you know what? You need to prioritize and get rid of that bad debt so that you can increase your cash flow as a result. Uh, that, that's a good point. And, and for those who haven't taken advantage of that, you can... Basically, that we have a sliding scale, and it looks at what is the um, the range in which you're paying for those things, and it helps you understand if this is something that you should get rid of immediately. It would be a bad debt, as Matthew was saying, or something that you, you could kind of go either way, or it may be one of those more efficient debts you should stay away from. So, yeah, definitely take advantage. Go to um, our community and download the Passport course or the Pathfinder course to get that detail. Stallion, when when you think about bad debt, do you agree with what Matthew said there? Would you would you say there's a such thing as bad debt or good debt? You share that opinion? Um, yeah, I think there, I, I would say there's inefficient debt. And if you're playing the game of cash flow, uh, as we have played many times, the only time that I'm going to pay off debt is when it's keeping me from that last mile of financial freedom. Uh, so, you know, again, that's just a practical application. If you've never played the game cash flow, go out and try it and you'll see what we're talking about because it changes the way you think about debt and passive income in general. And uh, so that, that would be my take on it. All right, Mark, let's, let's wrap up this uh, section with you. We're talking about reducing overhead. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. I like to look at stop spending time on things that don't generate income. 
the amount of people that signed up for Netflix, Paramount, um, Hulu, all those other things, you're spending money into a subscription service, which, which is fine. But are, is, is that generating any income for you? It's more than likely not. It's just sucking time out of your day that you could have done something else with. Um, but even better yet, you know, budget reviews, right? We talk about doing quarterly planning. I think your budget should be looked at every single month until you kind of get a handle on it. But really take it the last step. How do you reduce your overhead? Can it be a business expense? Well, what if my cable internet provider is what I need in order to do my job? Well, guess what? My, my home internet just became a business expense. So looking at ways to legally and uh, creatively and legally, you know, offset some of those costs, maybe some of them you can't get rid of, but if you can change the facts that surround that expense, it mm -hmm. can now become a business expense. And that's not mm -hmm. tax advice, by the way, that's not tax advice. Those, <laughs> seek, uh, properly professional. I, well, it's just, again, the whole podcast is intended to just create ideas, right? I mean, we're trying to give you a thought process of how could I increase my top line income, my active income? And we've given a couple of those ideas. Maybe you need to have a five to nine. Maybe you need to be leveraging other people's time more than yours, right? Maybe, maybe you need to be working with better partners that can help you with that process. But also there are, as we just said, we just got kind of through there, there's things we need to cut the fat on. Maybe it is something, Joey, like health sharing um, or like you said, um, you know, Matthew, it's reducing bad debt or inefficient debt. But let's get to the fun part. I mean, everybody, here's our podcast and here's us talking about creating mailbox money. That's what this is about. Jamie, let's talk a little bit about how I can increase my cash flow by building passive income uninvolved income yes yeah, so going back to you know building active income the whole point of of that for me was to have cash to then invest in passive income um a couple years ago pre uh pre c word we uh kind of slowed down on buying houses i thought we were already reaching the top of the market and and i was starting to get in a in a liquid cash cash position to buy man was i was i wrong about that but um i needed somewhere to put that money uh and so what i did is is i have used private lenders in the past uh for my for my flips and my real estate projects i went to some private lenders and said do you need more access to capital uh, the answer was yes and so i got a a decent a what I would consider a good return on my money just to lend my money to a professional private lender who then lent it out to somebody still doing real estate. Um, it was completely hands off. Uh, I got a check in the mailbox every single month and it was just passive, truly passive income or uh, yeah, truly passive income and cash flow into the mailbox every month. Man, I love that. Stallion, how about for you? Yeah, I think uh, this is an interesting thing that has helped us and that was public accountability leads to passive income. Now, you know, you've heard Russ and I share that our, our passive income report every single month, and that has created a major focus for us. Before we did that, our passive income was $2,500 a month. Nothing to write home about. And as we have continuously put that before you each month, it has grown and grown and grown, and it has become something that we want to protect and grow. And so we look at our all of our investments every single month, and we're consistently looking for ways to improve those. Now, that may not be what you need to do. Like you may not need to get a podcast and start sharing this from the rooftops. But the more you talk about it, the more um, you put it out there into your small groups, like maybe your next step is to join a mastermind of people that are on the same path. And I want to just give a plug to our inner circle and our passive income mastermind. If you have any interest in those things, I want you to jump on a call with one of our coaches here, wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash free call. Jump on a free call with them. Talk through the benefits of it, um, any challenges that may be there for you. But if you get into the right rooms, you will create the accountability and the focus it takes. And just like we've shared before, the reticular activating system in your brain will will start to see opportunities everywhere and uh, you know you start looking for a red car you will see red cars everywhere the same is true whatever you put in that place of importance will become a reality 
And so, yeah, I, I want to say join a mastermind, take that step, and that'll create more accountability to building the passive income that you're looking for. Stallion, in my house, it's yellow cars they're looking for because they've decided ah. the new punch bug is yellow cars. And yesterday, Ryan saw six, and there were some sore arms out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, talk to me about how do I build a passive income? How do I create mailbox money? Nothing like cash flow for the holidays and beyond. So one idea is Matthew talked about bad debt and not all debts created equal. So how about cashing out some equity in a home and then putting that lazy money to work, paying the mortgage, right? It's counterintuitive to think that going into debt can actually pay off the house faster, but it actually is. So did this a couple of years ago, took some cash out of the house that was lazy took a, which increased the mortgage payment by 500 bucks, but the money that came out actually reduced the total payment by 2,200 bucks. So rather than paying $2,200 a month in a mortgage, I now had the differential and I only had to pay $700. So not bad, but who would have thought going into debt would have actually created mailbox money, but that debt, that lazy money, that leverage went out, bought an asset, which then created cash flow, which came home, which paid for itself and also started paying for the house. So my house, even though it is a liability, in that moment, the access to the cash within it became an asset. You see how that that logical C brain works there, JD? <laughs> like he, he he starts thinking, okay, I can leverage the housekeeper or the, the lawn care guy to cut my grass. Well, I can also leverage money in the house. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Right. I get it. I get it. Um, but listen, I, uh, let's, let's just put the whole lawn care thing to bed real quick. I've got a real mower. And if you don't know what it is, look it up. Okay. It's a front reel. It's a McLean. It is really, really nice. In my front yard, when it is in season, it looks like a fairway. All right. So mm. just, just so we're clear, you don't get that from, from paying someone to take care of the grass for you. He, he's right. not going to give on that one, Russ. We're just he's not. Let him I, have it's that. A, it, I, hey, look, my, my grass looks like green grass. I mean, it doesn't look like a fairway. It just looks like a yard that somebody else cuts and I enjoy paying them to cut it. That's Unless you're out there on your hands and knees with scissors, I'm not impressed. Uh, oh, well, JD, does it okay. look like a fairway? Does it look like a fairway before or after 18, 18 rounds of golf? <laughs> it looks like a fairway before and, and my kids are not allowed on it. Okay. They don't, they don't get to go on it during the summer. Get off the grass. <laughs> they All call right, me Matt. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> All right, Matthew, jump in here. Let's, let's talk a little bit about passive income. Yeah, listen, talking about uh, mailbox money, one thing I learned actually fairly recently in my in my journey is I, I determined that one of my favorite types of mailbox money is a check that's signed by the IRS. And you know, as a, if you have a if you have a W two job or any other kind of active income, you know, there's passive investments that actually have special tax benefits that you can use to drastically lower or even eliminate your active income tax liability. And I use those uh, strategies legally, by the, by the way, <laughs> to, to completely eliminate my entire W-2 tax liability uh, last year. And so I got a nice, nice fat refund check from the IRS. Now, now moving forward, I uh, plan ahead. And so I don't even give the money to the IRS to, for it to be refunded. <laughs> but whether, whether you actually pay, whether you're actually preventing yourself from having to pay the IRS or you're getting money back from the IRS, regardless, the less money you give to the government puts more money in your pocket and ultimately increases your cash flow. Uh, it's definitely a different take. Well, you, you've had a chance to hear from these coaches. They've shared a way that you can increase active income. You can decrease expenses efficiently, but also you can find creative and unique ways to build passive income. These strategies, these ideas are all over our platform. They're all in our community. They're all over the podcast. It requires effort, though. What is not passive about passive income is learning how to do them. And we've talked about this before. There's four things that require to make a deal, right, Joey? That's right. There's there's time, right? You maybe you're the one that that has time to put into the deal. Maybe it's money. Maybe you're just somebody who's coming to the table who has cash. 
maybe it's experience. Maybe you've done it a handful of times and you could just give intellectual equity into the deal. Or maybe you can come with the deal itself. That's right. But there's all sort of ways that you can create this income and ways that you can create cash flow. And if you do it well and you store it in the right places, then you can move faster to financial freedom. All right, Stallion, what's your final take for today? Man, I I pray that this has been a value to you in the sense that you feel empowered to take action in the new year to say, these are things I can do and I can, I can, I'm not a victim of whatever I'm being paid actively right now. Like that is not your cap. That's not your limitation that has been put on you. You can do something about it. And, uh, you know, these are some practical things that you can do, but also as you engage with our community and our masterminds and other things, this is just the tip of the iceberg and, uh, you can do far more than you think is possible. Jamie, final thought. I think everything that that everybody talked about today has has a common theme, and, and I think Joey uh, touched on a little bit earlier. But everybody talked about something that took a level of investing in yourself and education to get started. Whether that's increasing your your day job income, you probably need to add a skill or some sort of training or or you know, education of some sort to increase that hourly wage, whether it's building another active income part-time, whether it's investing passively or whether it's, you know, lowering overhead, there's still an education piece. So spend that time investing yourself, start with education and take action. JD. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any more mic drop moments, um, you know, that I can, I can bring here uh, beyond what's already been said. Um, I think the biggest thing is one is, um, is, is you gotta be creative, right? Um, you gotta think outside the box. Uh, and the other thing is, is that you're not alone, right? There's a ton of folks out there that want the same things you want. So don't feel like you're alone. And I will tell you, if you continue to talk about creating financial freedom or doing these things and the people you keep talking about it too, are kind of slapping it away or saying that, you know, it's too hard or whatever it is, then, then find another group of people. Uh, we have a great outfit for that. Uh, it's called, um, the inner circle. Uh, so if you wanted to join that, there's a ton of folks out there that will support you in that journey. Uh, but be creative, um, and, uh, and, and good things happen. I, I promise they do. Matthew, final thought. I just say, you know, regardless of what your goals are in your uh, financial freedom journey, all you really need to do is just make sure that you continue to move forward day after day. You know, whether you're only moving an inch or you're moving a mile, as long as you're moving forward then you're making progress and you're taking away at that, uh, at that uh, goal. So I just echo everybody else, you know, uh, just, just, just keep up with the education, partner with people that may be further down the road than you uh, so that they can pull you along, join a community so that they can help you uh, pull you along t- on your financial freedom journey. Um, but regardless of how you do it, just keep moving forward. Mark, final thought. Cash flow is amazing. But cash flow is the MSG on your life. All it's going to do is enhance what's going on. If you haven't figured out what's actually things that you like, things that you want to do, things that you actually want, then all you're going to do is make what you currently have with more money. So you got to figure out for yourself, why are you actually doing this? Because that's going to make it so much easier to make all that money. And it's going to be even easier than to make even more. Well, hopefully you took this. Um, uh, advice to create cash flow, And we hope that um, you found value. If you did, please rate, review the show. And this would help us um, be found by other people on Apple or whatever, um, Spotify, whatever app that you're using to listen and download this podcast. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.